Hi, my name is Dan Trinidad, founder and CEO of Benchmark Data. The question I got most when we were just doing consulting was, what's my ROI? What's my ROI? And I would most likely to be talking either to the owner or the, the general manager or a C-level executive. And they want to know what their return on investment is in their marketing. And there are different marketing channels and different marketing campaigns. And what we always told them is, until you are running as efficient as possible, both in your processes and with your software systems, you're never going to know what your true ROI is. So you're 100% on point. If you neglect your process and you look at your ROI and your marketing and it's inventory management, lead handling, or internal sales chain that's causing the biggest leak within that flow, that's going to cost you more than what your marketing dollars are. So 100% dollar spent on process is going to improve the dollars spent on marketing. I think it's twofold. One, it's easy to push the buck down the road, right? If you if you consistently don't hit a goal and you pull the marketing lever and it doesn't work, you're constantly focusing on something that's external and it's not your fault. So the accountability is not there. Uh, in this industry, a good management team has to be accountable and has to accept what you know what, where the data is pointing them and where to look. Uh, so I think the second reason is maybe they don't know how to improve a process. There's not a lot of systems in place within this industry that could be and should be that some of the top dealers execute on. And I don't think they really have the information or know the know-how on what to do when something's not performing internally, if that makes sense. I, I think the managers really depends on how they came to become a manager. You know, Unfortunately, in this industry, they'll promote someone for, who's a really good salesperson and maybe has a very good internal process and in how they look at a, you know, their own personal achievements, and they'll be promoted to a manager. And majority of the time or often, that doesn't translate on how to educate or how to you know um, groom someone else who's coming up. I think managers are kind of in, in the in the uh, their perception is. They got to do the job, just get the job done, qualify them, bring them in. It's more of a hard nose, get your job done instead of nurturing. And, you know, in today's day and age, the consumer is different. You know, you got to service the client. You got to ask questions of the client. And you have to really, it's hard to groom salespeople who've been doing this for years. It's easier to work with some of the newer guys. Um, so I think it's just a challenge. And then it's called uh, ins inspecting what you're expecting. And once they get to that granular level of inspecting, I think they're going to see a better outcome or change. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it's the little things that make all the difference. You know, what we know, what we often see within a dealership is the easiest thing to, to have an impact on your sales that month is your internal sales chain and the management of your sales team. So for example, you know, the bottom sales, I have, a, I have a client this month and we're talking about how come we're not hitting our 150 sales this month? You know, it's a metric they've been trying to achieve in April for years. Now we've grown from 108 to 115. Now this year we're tracking 135. And the, the conversation went like, you know, I don't think we have enough of the market or I don't think we have enough leads to achieve that goal. But when I showed them, we had two new salespeople. And the, the bottom sales performer usually performs about 30% less than your top sales performer. And in this case, the two bottom salespeople were performing, performing at a 25 and 30% less than the store average. And yet they had the most ups, they had the most um, you know, um, walk-in distribution. And with, if they would have been closing just at the store average, they would have had 14 more sales month to date. And that was last week. And that'll put us exactly at 150 sales. So it's just managing <clears throat> the walk-in distribution, <clears throat> managing the up distribution, and just looking at who's taking, you know, who's taking on those opportunities. Um, a simple tweak like that can make all the difference in a month. So the first thing we do is we do a funnel review, and so we, what we do is we measure 
their amount of users, the VDPs, which is an indication of marketing. Then we measure their VDP to leads, which is an indication of inventory management. Then we measure leads to visits as an indication of lead handling. And then your in-store visits to closing to sales, so your closing percentage. The reason why we do that is every dealership has a different weak point, you know, within their flow. And it's really, really crucial that the dealership knows where they're lacking in that funnel and they prioritize that part of the funnel to start correcting. And it's always process, whether it's a marketing process or an inventory process. Um, you know, one of the things that I've noticed that most successful dealers do is inventory management. I think that has the biggest impact on sales. And, you know, what does that look like? It's usually recon time, I think, is number one. Uh, you know, some dealers are really happy with five, five to six days reconditioning time where others are above 10. But, you know, I hate to break the news, but some of the top dealers are two days, <clears throat> two to three days in reconditioning time. So their time to line is instant. So what they buy that vehicle for day one, you know, there's really no depreciation by day two or three. Whereas with another dealer, they buy a vehicle, they put it out on the lot 15 days later, they're, they're already, you know, their values are already much different. So I think that it's really important to find what part of that funnel is, is, is impacting your ROI the most, focus on it. And I guarantee it's a process issue, process issue that can be improved. Here's another interesting, you know, uh, example. We have a young salesperson at a dealership versus a, you know, experienced salesperson at a dealership. Where what we measure is we like to measure ups to demo percentage, ups to write a percentage, right? Those are, I think are the two most impactful metrics that a dealership could look at with an individual salesperson. So if the store average is up to demo, a good average is anything above 75, 78%. But the most important metric is did they get them to the write-up phase? And what we see is when a when a young salesperson doesn't get them to the write-up phase, it's usually because they're not qualifying them properly. They're not gaining their trust. Maybe during the demo ride, they're not asking the right questions, and the TO isn't isn't a good TO. So it might be a flying TO, and they're not ask, an, answering the questions. Does he have a trade in? What's his payment? How much does he got down? Does he have a co-signer? So when they come back to the dealership. And they're they're sitting down with the prospect, and you know they're going to TO them to the manager. A lot of that information hasn't been gathered, and there's really no bond or trust. So the consumer is reluctant to give that information, and we we recognize that's the number one metric that really increases sales is your ups to write a percentage. Where if it's an older sales rep or more experienced sales rep with a low ups to a write a percentage, what we we notice is they like to overqualify. You know they don't need the manager's help. They know they have all the answers. This person doesn't have, you know, good enough credit to buy a car or they're not going to qualify. So they kind of rush them out. But what we see consistent in both of them is they go through that process quickly that that customer leaves and they're standing at the door onto the next customer. The follow-up process and feedback percentages are low. So they usually get the most opportunity, have the lowest ups to uh, write up and the lowest feedback percentage. And I'm telling you, that impacts the dealership, you know, huge, greatly a month over month. And just by fixing or analyzing those two metrics with all your sales team, you can have a much different month. And that's something that you can implement today. That's not something you have to wait for, you know, next month or, or something different. If the manager's looking at those metrics and they understand what's impacting their sales, that can be turned and changed overnight. For years, we did this. We did we we uh, gathered the data manually, and we were we were a boutique consultancy where we would spend a lot of time within a dealership and provide this information and try to help them, you know, groom along the sales rep. Now we have a software that's automated that does uh, creates these reports for them on a daily basis, and it sends them a benchmark alert and lets them know this individual is underperforming this specific metric with a. For example, here's you can do A, B, or C. Um, what we're what we're updating now is is an accountability factor where the the manager who's in charge of that department would get an alert and they would have to put in a note and close out the alert to, just to show that someone took action on what's happening. So it, it's it's no longer taking a lot of time. It's presented to the dealership, you know, for them and lets them know you know what's wrong. 
you know, potentially how to fix it and gives them the opportunity to close out what we call an open ticket or an open alert so they can address the issue. Now, understand that not all, not all uh, changes are going to have a huge impact. It takes time. And I also want to say that data should not be weaponized. When a dealer first starts analyzing data and managing their store by leveraging data to the best of its ability, you have to give it time. You have to give it three to six months for everyone to make an adjustment and you know try to improve. As soon as you weaponize it, it has a negative you know, impact and no one wants to be graded at that level. Then they start to skew numbers. Now, you have to have the trust of the employee. First of all, it comes from the top down. So you need an owner of the solution, regardless of what solution a dealer invests in, whether it's a marketing campaign or a website or you know our software for process management. You need an owner within the dealership to own the solution who's going to manage the process, meaning he's going to manage the alerts and manage the timelines. That person has to be a voice of reason and of trust. The employees have to trust the data and trust the person that's delivering the information. Uh, I, I usually think it's not, it doesn't fall on the employee when they can't improve. It's usually management because management is in charge of hiring, right? Making sure hire slow, fire fast, making sure you got the right people on board. And then it's up to the management to provide that, that nurturing and education for them to get better. So I think the employee should kind of have almost you know, free reign in the first 90 days to look at their data, find out what their what their weak points are and try to improve upon it. But it's it's imperative that the dealership has something in place to help them grow and groom. You know, we find oftentimes where you know dealerships over investing in a certain part of the funnel, right? Let's say they're over investing the bottom part of the funnel and they could save five, ten thousand dollars a month and they wouldn't have any impact on their sales. A lot of times when you find that they want to know what's the next marketing you know campaign that we can reinvest it in because we still want to sell more cars. My answer to them is find the leak within your sales chain. And if it's in sales and development, invest it in that. You know, gets if, if the managers are not equipped to, you know, educate and bring that salesperson along, bring someone who can. And I, I think when they adapt that mindset, they're going to get a better outcome. They're going to get much better results, you know, for their investment. Sure. I would say it's a dealer, one who has to be data driven, you know, is, is though they don't have to <clears throat> completely understand how to be data driven or know what to do, how to be data driven. But they have to be of the mindset that we want to make decisions based off empirical data to improve. Number one. Number two, they have to have someone within the dealership who's going to manage that process and is an account and is, and is accountable to manage that process. Someone who's willing and able. So when we do a demo for a dealer, we have a discovery call. You know, we like to ask who who within your dealership can you see in this position, and is this person available either on a week, uh, biweekly, or monthly, um, for monthly meetings? So we can go online and we can onboard and continue to educate that person. Once they have that in place and they can visualize someone that they that they trust, that's an ideal client for us. And as long as that <clears throat> that person is transparent, willing, and able to look at the data you know, make adjustments accordingly and educate, then then it's a, it's going to be a really good relationship. And, you know, results are inevitable. You know, it all really depends on how long it's going to take us to achieve that goal. That's, that's pretty much it. You know, I think it's important for the dealer to be of that mindset. And I think it's important for them to pay attention to their processes um, on our end, you know, that's one of the main things we experienced. And especially when we onboard a new client, you know, they, they want to know, you know, how accurate is your data or we'll get a lot of pushback that that's not right. So we actually, within our system, we have an auditor and we can see, you know, when, when, um, th when things are kind of fudged or not, uh, followed accurately, whether it's leads, whether it's visits, BBACs, BDC appointment or appointment shows, we in our dashboard we have CRM data, and then we have benchmark data, and we hold them side by side. And oftentimes those numbers will be, you know, different. Anywhere from 10, 15 in the beginning, it could be up to 40 percent. And utilizing that auditor, we're able to show well this person didn't use a stock, put in a stock number. You know, this person said this uh, that the appointment arrived 
Uh, it was an appointment, but they put the appointment in after the visit arrived. So it was probably a visit, not an appointment. So we're able to break it down and it, we use that as a teaching tool and a management tool for the manager to go in and make sure everyone's trying to follow the process accordingly. It takes us a good three to four weeks uh, to implement this process and have everyone on board. So it's important that the dealership you know, follows it. They, they're of the mindset that they want to get as, as clean as possible and get the, accurate, the data as accurate as possible. But we actually have, you know, some tools on our end that we can kind of see what's going on, even if they're not utilizing the system the right way. Um, you know, most dealerships don't, they, they, when they think data, they're thinking in terms of marketing. They're not, they're not measuring their internal processes, you know, first and foremost. And once you start doing that, you have to understand that you're already ahead of the curve. Now you're starting to see where you can improve internally, right? And once you accept that and understand that every dealer has similar issues, every dealer has the holes in different areas of the processes, all you have to do is say, how do I focus and how do I set them up for success? And again, I think that's that's management and, and you know, C-level, you know, a problem or, or challenge to try to, to try to solve. How can I put my team in a better position to succeed if the metrics aren't where I want them to be? So well, what we'd like to do is, well, well, we know what the, an OEM will have some specific data and we can use that as a guideline, but we pull historical data into the dashboard and we'll do a 90 day average of their performance. And then according to what their goal is for the month, we'll let them know throughout that sales chain, what percentage, what type of improvement, improvement by percentage in each part, in each part of that funnel that they need to improve upon to, to meet that goal. So instead of saying every dealership needs to be here. Every, or every dealership has to follow this OEM guideline. We have to first figure out where you're at, what's your starting point, and how can we improve upon what you're doing now. Then we can start saying, here's an OEM percentage, or here's an industry standard. Um, you know, we see metrics up and down. I have, you know, for lead handling, I have a, a you know, BDC team that performs um, leads just shown at 34%. I don't care what, what, what part of the season it is consistently leads to show, not leads to appointment, leads to shows at 34%. That's an, that's an excellent number. And, you know, you have other dealerships that are at 12%. You know, so you have high and you have low. Um, I, I think a good number is right about 28%, you know, but not, that's a good low benchmark, I would say for any dealer. So there's some industry averages that I've seen throughout the years. Uh, there's some OEM recommendations, but then I think the most important metric is where does a dealer sit at now? And how can we improve upon his personal performance, you know, in the next, you know, 60 to 90 days? Um, so what, what we've, during our consulting time, in the majority of the time that we would sit in meetings, and I would say, I call them the executive meetings, the monthly meetings, we'd spend hours with the marketing team and with the dealership, you know, um, ownership and management. And we'd be going over metrics such as cost per click, click through rate, impression, impression share, influences. These are five soft conversion metrics. And we would talk about them through exhaustion. And what I would sit there and tell the dealer is we're having another, you know, month where we're underperforming by 20%. And the marketing team or agency is telling you how great they're doing in all these soft metrics. As a dealer, if you're not investing in soft metrics, one, they are important, but that's their, that, that's for the marketing team to focus on and understand their internal performance. It has nothing to do with the dealership. The dealership is investing in hard conversions. That's leads, visits, and sales. That's what they should care about. That's it. Why is that? Now, if all the soft of all those soft conversions are performing all of them and they're all coming to your website and they're not converting into leads, then that's a conversation with the dealer and say, hey, let's take a look at your inventory. You know, if they're coming to your site and they're looking at your VDP and they're staying up, you know, above two and a half minutes, three minutes on that VDP page, that's a quality visit. If they're not becoming a lead, which is a hard conversion, conversion, why is that? What's wrong with our inventory? You know, when's the last time we updated pricing? Do we have the right pictures? What was our time to line? And now you could ask those questions internally. 
But the dealerships spin themselves in a circle month after month, focusing on these soft conversions, and they don't understand them. They're not a marketing agency, nor should they want to be. Another thing I would tell you is I would never invest in impression share unless my conversion rate is high. And unless my leads, my, my, my VDP to leads is above 15% on any specific campaign, I'm not going to invest in impression share because the, you're, all you're going to do is spend more money for visitors that aren't going to convert. Um, and that's a great way to, to you know, to, to spend your money quickly. Uh, another example are influences. You know, we have a saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And not all multi-channels are actually influencing a sale. Um, so, you know, that's just another area that a dealer really has to be careful with. And what they want to do is trust their marketing agency to make sure your soft conversions are there but focus, uh, your soft conversions are there, but focus on your hard conversions because that's what's really ultimately going to make a difference with the new dealership.